In this video, you're going to learn how to solve radical equations involving two radicals. These tend to be the more difficult ones when you're learning about solving radical equations. So we're going to go through two examples. We'll start with an easier one and I'll show you a little bit more challenging one. Let's dive into the first example. So the key is you want to isolate or get one of those radicals on one side of the equal sign first. Then what you're going to do is you're going to square both sides. And what that'll do is that square and that square root, their inverses, they're going to cancel one another out, getting us rid of, getting rid of that one radical. But what happens is we're going to have another radical that we're going to then have to isolate again, get it on one side of the equation and square both sides like a second time. So that's what we're doing right now. Now when you square something and it's a binomial, we have to think of that as that quantity twice. So sometimes what's helpful is to write it, you know, right next to its Self like that. So you've got two of these. The mistake that students sometimes make is they say, well, I'll just square this and I'll just square this and I'll be done. You'll be missing uh, one of the terms if you do it that way. So you want to foil this out or distribute twice. So I take the square root of 4 minus x times square root of 4 minus x, which just gives us 4 minus x because anything times itself, it's like squaring it and the square and the square root, those are inverses and you just get what's underneath that square root. Now, if I distribute to here, I get 1 times square root of 4 minus x. If I distribute here, I get another 1 times square root of 4 minus x. So I have 2 times the square root of 4 minus x. And then if I take 1 times 1, I just get 1. So that's simplified on the right side. On the left side, we've just got our x plus 1. Now we want to get this radical by itself on one side of the equation, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to 4 plus 1 is 5. So I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. Now, I'll just do it like this. Minus 4, minus 1, that's like minusing 5, okay? And I'm going to add x to both sides. Okay, so that's giving us 2x minus 4 is equal to 2 times the square root of 4 minus x. Okay, now I can divide everything by 2 to get the square root by itself. So we'll divide this side by 2, basically everything by 2. So that's going to give us x minus 2 equals the square root of 4 minus x. Now notice we've got that square root by itself on one side of the equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to square again the left and right sides. The square and the square root, those are inverses. Those undo each other, right? So we get 4 minus x. Again, don't make the mistake of just writing x squared minus 4. That, that's not correct. You want to think of this as x minus 2 times itself, x minus 2. You can distribute twice, or if you know the FOIL acronym, you can do it that way. So this is x squared minus 4x plus 4. So see how I'm getting negative 2x, another negative 2x, which is negative 4x, and then negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Okay, now all of our square roots are, are gone, so it should be a little bit easier to solve now. I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides, so those are going to cancel. I'm going to add x to both sides. Okay, and so then that's going to give us x squared minus 3x equals 0. So let's put that up over here, x squared minus 3x equals 0. We're going to factor by factoring out an x, okay, greatest common factor, and we're going to set each of these factors equal to 0 and solve. That's our zero product property. So if I add 3 to both sides, we get x equals 3 and x equals 0, but not so fast, right? One of these solutions or both these solutions might be false or extraneous, so you want to go back to the original problem, okay, even before we squared both sides, and see if it makes the equation true. So let's start with 0. If we put 0 in here, 4 minus 0 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. If I put 0 in over here, I get 0 plus 1 is 1. The square root of 1 is 1. Does 1 equal 3? No, and it certainly doesn't. So that means this is a false answer. It's extraneous. Let's check 3. If we put 3 in here, we get 3 plus 1 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. We put 3 in here, 4 minus 3 is 1, the square root of 1 is 1, plus 1 is 2. So we get 2 equals 2. That means that 3 is a good solution, and we got it. So you want to make sure you go back and check your answers in the very original problem. So let me erase the whiteboard. Let's take a look at a more challenging example. Maybe you can do this one on your own. Okay, for example number 2, see if you can do this one if you want to pause the video and try it. Remember the steps. Step number 1, get one of the radicals by itself on one side of the equal sign. So to do that, I'm going to add this group right here to this other side. So if I do that, by adding this to the other side, I'm going to get a positive 2 square root of x minus 2 minus 1. Remember, whenever you switch from one side to the other, that sign's going to change to the opposite. So I'm just adding this quantity to both sides. The reason I didn't write it down is just because 
we've got limited space here and I wanna make sure I can show you all the important steps. Okay, step number two now, uh, we wanna square both sides, right? Because we're trying to get rid of these radicals so we can eventually get x by itself and, and find out what x equals, right? So squaring and square rooting, those are inverses, so we just get x plus three. Uh, is equal to, now this part here we're going to have to foil out because we've got uh, a binomial squared. Now some of you know the uh, pattern or the shortcut for doing it, so if you know that pattern, go ahead and do it, but for some people they, they forget that pattern, the a squared 2ab b squared pattern, but let's go ahead and uh, distribute, so that's going to give us 4, because 2 times 2, square root of x minus 2 times square root of x minus 2 is just x minus 2, uh, then we've got this outer, so that's going to give us negative 1 times this quantity, so that's negative 2 squared of x minus 2. Another negative 2 squared of x minus 2, which is negative 4 times the square root of x minus 2, and negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Bring down the x plus 3. Okay, now let's see, this is going to be 4x minus 8, and so now we've got, let's subtract 4x from both sides, so that's going to give us negative 3x. Let's this comes out to negative 7, so let's add 7 to both sides. It gives us positive 10 equals negative 4 times square root of x minus 2. Now we could divide everything by negative 4. That's going to give us some fractions. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to divide everything by negative 1. That's going to make this positive 3x, negative 10, and positive 4 square root of x minus 2. Okay, now we've got this square root on one side. Let's go ahead and square both sides uh, to get rid of this square root. So this is going to be 4 squared, which is 16. Square root of x minus 2 squared is just going to be x minus 2. Here we're going to have to write this twice and foil it, okay, or distribute twice. So this gives us 9x squared. This gives us negative 30x, another negative 30x. Negative 10 times negative 10 is positive 100. Distribute 16x minus 32. Okay, this is a big problem, isn't it? Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get everything on one side and set it to zero. So I've got 9x squared. This is negative 60x minus 16x will give us negative 76x. Add 32, that's positive 132 equals zero. Now, we could try to factor this, but these numbers are, are crazy big, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and do the quadratic formula. Okay, so you remember the quadratic formula. If not, here, I'll write it down right here for us. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. This is going to be our a, negative 76 is our b, and 132 is our c. So let's go ahead and put that in. We're going to probably have to go to the calculator here in just a second, but let's go ahead and put these numbers in. So we've got, uh, you know, put it down here. x equals the opposite of b, so that's positive 76 plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that's negative 76, the quantity squared, make sure you put it in parentheses, minus 4ac, c is 132, all divided by 2 times a, which is 9. Okay, so I'm going to the calculator, let's see what this comes out to. Uh, I should play some music while I'm doing this so we can <laughs> pass the time, right? So let's see, 76, uh, plus the square root of negative 76 squared minus 4 times a times c divided by 2a. Okay, and let's do the minus 1. Okay, so I'm getting 6 or 22 ninths. But remember, with these radical equations, they're sneaky, right? Because sometimes you get like a false answer. So we're going to take both of these, we're going to put them back into the original equation, see if it's true. So follow me on this. So if I take the 6, 6 plus 3 is 9, the square root of 9 is 3. 6 minus 2 is 4, the square root of 4 is 2, times negative 2 would be negative 4, and 3 minus 4 does equal negative 1, so we're happy about that one. Okay, plugging in the 22 9ths, let's check that. So we've got the square root of 22 ninths plus 3, which is 27 ninths, we're just getting common denominators, minus 2 times the square root of 22 ninths minus 2, which is like 18 ninths, and we're wondering, does that equal negative 1? So this is 49 
ninths. This is uh, square root of four ninths. Uh, square root of 49 is seven, square root of nine is three. Square root of four is two, square root of nine is three, so that's two thirds times two, so this would be four thirds. Seven thirds minus four thirds is three thirds, which is equal to one, but does one equal negative one? No, so that's an extraneous solution. We're gonna cross that one out. So we're just getting one answer, six. So great job. So if you wanna uh, learn more, or practice more working with these radical equations, follow me over to a previous video I did on the same topic, talking about how to solve radical equations. I'll see you over in that video. We'll get some more practice. I'll see you there.